Thank you so much for taking the time to talk about Marvel 616. I will so be exciting. directing questions, this question individually so we can sort of make the Zoom situation work. So Sarah, let me ask you this. I, I find it in in very interesting that each episode uh, with each director, it's its own thing. Like there's this notion that a series has to be like, that we like to consume the same thing over and over, uh, but this is not the case. How quickly did you know that that was the way to go and that just let Marvel be the through line of each different episode? From the get-go, we knew that's what we wanted to do. I mean, if you look at Marvel and the 80 years of comics, we have told so many different types of stories, comedy, street level, a uh, classic Captain America and everything in between. And we wanted to do the same thing with this series. We figured if we were gonna try to tackle 80 years of Marvel history and show a variety of kind of snapshots of what Marvel means to people and what people have meant to Marvel, we needed to go in from the get-go knowing that each story was gonna be distinct and unique and that was gonna be the best way to tell the most honest story, the most personal story, and hopefully the most enjoyable set of stories, right? There's something for everyone in this series. Most definitely. So Paul, I mean, I loved your episode, but I feel like every question that I, ha that I have for you is kind of like peeking this behind the curtain and seeing the you know what happens with the Wizard of pick, Oz. Pick behind the, uh, go behind let the me, curtain, we'll uh, see. <laughs> Let's see, how how quickly did, during the process of being assigned this, did you know that it was the mockumentary or was it part of the process when you sort of found the key that, that you were going to go in that, that direction? You know, coming to this process was really interesting for me because I am not a documentary filmmaker. I, I have directed, you know, comedy television that I've written. And when I first met with Sarah and her team, what was kind of appealing about it was they came to me and said, here's our sandbox. Anything that you wanna talk about in the Marvel comics world. And my mind just kind of like went on fire. I was like, oh my gosh, what, what do I wanna tell? <laughs> what stories do I wanna tell? And you know, I'm somebody who not only has written Marvel comic books, but I'm actually a villain in a Marvel comic book. So I, I have mm -hmm. some history with Marvel. I, I think it's a part of my DNA. So when we were talking about what we wanted to do, it was an idea that I came to them with that then grew together. And you know, the idea was let's let the audience in on conversations that Marvel fans have about those characters that they remember, but they're not quite sure. And then when you're at a bar or a restaurant, and you're just kind of having these kind but didn't he have a yellow suit? Oh yeah, yeah. And he was called the wizard, right? Oh my God, the wizard, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. kind of, I wanted to embrace that. Um, so that's how we started off. Uh, just let's go and tell these stories. Let's prove to people that these characters did exist and also kind of blow their mind and say, did you know that this was also part of the Marvel universe? And they still are. And uh, we stumbled upon a handful of characters that were amazing. You know, a truck driver who has a CB radio in his head. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. we have, you know, we, uh, there's a character we cut out, a vampire cow that, I mean, called Hell Cow, amazing. I don't know why we <laughs> cut that. As a matter of fact, we should put that back in immediately. Um, but um, when we stumbled upon something that we felt had enough of a story behind it, that started to open up our minds to how to approach this documentary. This documentary was incredibly malleable. I didn't come in and say, I want to do it exactly like this. I think the first part okay. is what we kind of came in going like, let's do this, and then it morphed again, and then it came to this end result. And the tone of the documentary was something that really was found in post. We started to address certain things and, and have okay. fun with it. Like, you know, so every bit of it, I kind of compare it to improvisation, which is my background, which is sort of like, I had an initiation and then we yes ended where we went. So uh, it was a really collaborative process and I give everything to uh, Sarah and her team for allowing me on that journey and making something that probably was not exactly what they expected, but was something that is uh, uniquely me, which is kind of the Marvel ethos, like get the creators, the tools that they yeah. need and then most, support you. Most, most definitely. But let me ask you this, given that you went through this process, uh, are you a proposal for, I mean, are you a defender after going through this of physical media? Cause I just was having like a, you know, like having the comic or having the movie or have, cause I was actually having a conversation with my wife. I, I started singing the Mr. Ed theme song and my wife uh -huh. looked at yeah. me 
crazy. And I had literally, she didn't believe me. I had to like literally whip out the YouTube, like this was a show in the fifties about a talking horse it. and she would not believe me. So like having the comics, are you, did it make you more of a believer of the value of keeping, you know, the, our sort of entertainment culture in a physical form? Uh, look, if I have my druthers, I would have every DVD that I've ever owned in the shelf, you know, in the box, in the in the dust cover, every book that I've ever bought. I love that. I love looking at it. I love when you used to go to people's apartments and you could tell a little bit about them by seeing what was up on their walls. It wasn't their art. It was what they liked. And, you know, the CD racks, mm -hmm. I had them. And every year I give up more and more of it as I go to digital. I will say this. Yes, it was amazing to touch these tangible copies. But as a parent, uh, I can't get to the comic book store as often as I want. And, um, and things pass me by. And I love reading digitally now. Like reading digitally to me has blown open the comic book game. I actually am a better comic book reader because of it. I'll take more chances. I'll go back. I have my Marvel Unlimited pass. So if you tell me about Hell Cow, do, 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 do. Go in, I'm going to read Hell Cow. You know, like, uh, and, that, and that was not go. available to me, you know, before. And so... Yes, I love it, but I also love the accessibility of now. And as much as I have all those DVDs and I have DVDs in my basement right now, I'm just typing it into my, uh, you know, into my device and uh, I'm watching <laughs> what I got. You know, I'm going to buy it because it's going to be better quality anyway than that crappy DVD. I'm going to put it what? In, you know, <laughs> so forget it. Yeah. So I want <laughs> it, but I, I also appreciate the now. All right. So Sarah, let me ask you this. How was sort of the process? Because I mean, obviously like marrying the talent with the ideas that you wanted to explore because obviously Paul is the, was the perfect person to handle brute force and all the stuff so it's sort of like how was it sort of gauging that for each episode and how, how how was the process yeah it was a little different for everyone I mean for for Paul we actually less married to a concept and more married to just the fact we wanted to work with Paul um, and that was a similar process for a, a lot of the directors someone like Gillian Jacobs was the same thing we knew Gillian's work we knew she was gonna bring passion to the project. She was really passionate about STEM as it relates to women. And so we said, hey, how about women in comic books? And, and then she started diving in and the higher, further, faster episode. I mean, it just brings people to tears at the end because there's such a, a great story mm -hmm. in, the, in the character she unearthed, but also this kind of inspirational tone at the end. Um, so everyone was different. There were others where we knew we had a specific story we wanted to tell. Um, whether it be the story of cosplay or uh, going overseas to Spain to uh, showcase some of our incredible comic book artists. And for that, we knew uh, Clay, our director on that one, was going to be such the perfect person because those kind of profile stories where you have to weave two different narratives together, tell a larger story, but also give background is actually very tough to do. And it's something that he has done incredibly well over the course of his career. So each one was different. And I, and I give a lot of credit to our partners at Supper Club for that, who really came with the expertise on documentary filmmaking, who came with a passion to help us think outside of the box for Marvel, right? There's a very traditional way to tell a kind of historical piece about Marvel or a pop culture piece about Marvel. And I think as you start to watch this series, you realize that we very much stepped outside of that comfort zone and took some big swings on telling stories in different ways that maybe people wouldn't expect from us. Uh, so a lot of faith to them and then a lot of faith to everyone at Marvel who, who worked with us on this, who really just like dove in, helped find the characters, helped guide it. There were a lot of executive producers who worked on the series and everyone was really kind of hands-on to, to get us to the, the final place we are now. Yeah, each episode is perfectly matched. So Paul, let me ask you this. How did you feel when you presented the cut uh, to your producers where in, the, in, in your episode, the crew is sort of the people always telling you, no, like, no, yes. not, don't have money for that. <laughs> and, and your experience was the total opposite because it seems like you got yes. Um, you so. know, look, <laughs> there, there is some, uh, you know, obviously we had some fun with deconstructing a documentary, but also um, we had to do and work within the confines. You know, uh, the end, you know, uh, presentation uh, was dictated by money. We were not in a limitless world, you know, um, which explains why it's like 
90 seconds long, you know, or, or however long it is. <laughs> and, and, you know, the reactions are, are real. And the, the people that we presented to are, you know, we're, we're seeing them, you know, take it in. And that was something that was really fun for me, you know? So yes, we are calling it out, but I also feel like we are also letting you in on, I mean, it's, it's, I guess less of a mockumentary and more calling you in on how it, it is to make a documentary because everything that they said is all true. We can't <laughs> go there. We can't go here, you know, um, <laughs> but, um, but that's part of the fun of it too. I mean, like to me, that was, I wanted to embrace that. That became a, a, a fun side note. All right, but I'm, talk I'm talking to you and not John Farrow, which I appreciate. So my time's up. <laughs> thank you so much for your time. You guys stay healthy wherever you are. Okay, thank you You too, so much. thank you. You as well. Thank you.